Hello. Hi there. Welcome to Guiding Voice podcast series. The Guiding Voice for a better future. This podcast is to help students and young professionals to shape their careers. In every episode, we interact with industry experts and drive some insightful conversations that will help our audience learn great things. We also share an interesting trivia and fun fact about IT world towards the end of every episode. Thank you for tuning in. This is Navin and I'm with my co-host Sudhakar. Dear listeners, today we are going to discuss service delivery and operations. And we are pleased to welcome Sagar to our podcast series and talk about this critical topic. Sagar Deshpande is currently working with a major global e-commerce giant and is based out of Pune. Sagar spent 12 years in various roles in operations, tech support and implementation space with organizations like ADP, CDK Global. Out of these 12 years, Sagar performed 5 years in various leadership roles. Sagar is Six Sigma certified and ITIL certified. Sagar has advanced branch communicator certification in Toastmasters. Sagar has PG program in business analytics and business intelligence from University of Austin, Texas. Sagar, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm I'm really excited to have a, a discussion with both of you. Thank you, Sagar. Let's get into it then. How do you define service delivery in general terms? For a layman, service delivery can be defined as product uh, services which are developed by programmers or developed by software team. We need to eventually deliver those products or services to the end user or end customer. So service delivery comes into picture when product development is done. So this is one aspect of service delivery. Another aspect in terms of operations where processes are set, they are kind of repetitive processes and we need to do them a day in and day out. That's when service delivery and operations teams comes into picture. Okay, so delivering these solutions, products, uh, services to the customer base. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. What are various roles available in service delivery? How does the growth path look like for a fresher, for example? Okay, there are various aspects of a career growth in service delivery or operations team. When a fresher joins any operations organization or service delivery team, he will start up with eventually either transactional processes or tech support process or voice process. So the growth can be into leadership domain, it can be into subject matter expertise, it can be into training domain. So basis individual strength and interest one has various opportunities of growth in service delivery or operations. So thanks Sagar. And how do you think the service delivery organization is different from R&D or engineering organizations? Service delivery organizations differ from engineering organizations specifically in terms of a uh, skill set. All engineering uh, projects or engineering organizations requires you to have solid understanding of programming or computer science. When it comes to service delivery, that is not expected. The kind of skill set that service delivery team or operations team will expect from you is you have to have analytical skills. You should be good in terms of communication. you should be able to work within team and you should be very good with working under stress although service delivery and operations team do not require any solid programming background they do require excellent analytical skills because gone are the days when service delivery or operations team were only restricted to copy paste work there is some very advanced work which happens in most of the operations teams and service delivery teams which require individual to critically think analyze work with team work with multiple stakeholders and it actually helps individual to groom himself or herself in a dynamic uh, person and it actually uh, gives you multiple opportunities in terms of career growth as well that is great so you mentioned about the communication skills analytical skills and also covered certain aspects saying that the work is no longer monotonous or repetitive sounds exciting to me and with regard to the myths the industry is full of myths and feelings 
right? Right. And there is a myth that the engineers are paid more compared to delivery and operations folks. So, what's your take on this? There is some truth uh, to it, but it, it is not completely that way. For instance, it again depends on the kind of role that you are into. As all of us are aware, data is uh, new oil. Data has become new oil. Similarly, in case of service delivery or operations, they closely work with engineering team. They closely work with program management team. They closely mm-hmm. work with business analytics team. So, at the starting point, if I have to think. a grad from engineering college and a grad from normal ba bsc college they will have a difference in package but it will not be a huge but eventually as you develop your skills as you develop as you progress in your career either it could be into leadership domain or it could be into training or it could be into program management your pay your salary will be at par with folks from engineering teams as well so there is some truth to it uh, initially but that is applicable to uh, everyone for instance uh, engineering grads from tier 1 colleges will get paid on different scale when engineering grads from tier 3 college will get paid on a different scale so similarly b versus bsc or bcom grad will have some difference in the beginning but if you develop your skill and if you move up in the industry eventually your pay package your salary will be at par with engineers and these days earlier we used to have a differentiation that most of the companies will not recruit engineers in service delivery or operations team but that has changed now i would say out of 10 people that we recruit three or four people will be engineers and they are happy to work in operations and service delivery so it's not a major gap i would say okay continuing the topic on myths you know sagar let me pick up on another myth that is there in the industry right it is said that the employees in service delivery need to work in odd shifts only and they have very minimal work life balance what is your take on that topic that is a myth again all operations team and service delivery team do not work in uh, night shift or odd shifts specifically teams which are client facing which have a role wherein you have to interact customers or your stakeholders in in USA or UK that's the only case you are required to work in night shift but again if we have to generalize then there are many industries which work in night shift for example doctors work in night shift but we never ask why do they have to work in night shift so this industry expects little flexibility in terms of shifts because essentially we are serving customers who are at the end of our world when our sun goes down their sun comes up so there is some truth to it that there are teams who work in night shift but uh, there are teams which do not have direct customer interaction they work in day shift out of my 12 years i was in night shift for 3 and 1/2 years uh, for rest of my career i was in day shift and uh, regarding work life balance it depends from company to company there are few companies where there is a workload basically service oriented or a third party operations companies like for instance webpro tcs those examples i can say there is a little stretching working beyond your shift does happen but when it comes to captive companies there is no concept of extending your shift or coming on weekends so it again depends on company to company and culture to culture what what they practice these are great insights and definitely clarified the question for what kind of professionals do you think this operations role will be suitable so i would say operations role is suitable for anyone who is good uh, with analytical skills who is mm-hmm. good uh, with working in teams who has great communication skills and eager to learn new things service delivery and operations it's not restricted to only working in operations for instance i have few friends who joined after their normal graduation like bsc or bcom they worked in their respective teams for a couple of years and then they developed their interest in some of them were keen on getting into linux administration some of them were keen into getting into business analytics so along with whatever work into delivery service delivery and operations you're getting if you upskill yourself there will be ample opportunities in these uh, 
field that you can actually shift your career from service delivery to maybe analytics maybe system admin so those opportunities are there so the kind of professionals that we look for is if it is experienced obviously that person has worked into it so while recruiting most of the times they look for someone who's already worked on it if role is pretty complex but for entry level we simply look for someone who's good with analytical skills clear thinking team player and he should be great with communication skills he should be able to understand what is being said he should be able to read understand and think on his own he should not need spoon feeding from his manager or his supervisor so those aspects we look for that's cool i think these tips will be very much helpful for our audience thanks for the insights so i'm really impressed with your initiative uh, the guiding voice i have heard a couple of podcast also and mm-hmm. I, i would like to ask one question to navin and sudhakar both of you what was the motivation behind starting this podcast that's a fantastic question in fact same question was asked by one of our uh, guests uh, uh, sherat raju as well and coming to the motivation it's all about giving back to the society it's all about sharing and caring and when it comes to me and sudhakar we have the passion and flair for helping student community we used to visit lot of engineering colleges and b schools over the weekends and mentor and coach students and when this lockdown has started we thought we will do something different and that's when we got together and launched this podcast and so far we are able to launch over 40 episodes and we reached 545 plus followers on linkedin and about 250 on facebook and 215 subscribers on uh, youtube uh, to be honest this is not a small feat however we have a long way to go we would need the help of young professionals and also seasoned professionals like you in terms of taking this podcast to the level where in each and every young professional and student that is aspiring to get into the it domain should listen to this and draw these insights so that they can make some wise decisions while planning their career or while switching internally or laterally to different roles sudhakar what's your take on it i think you summed it up uh, well navin only one thing that i would add is when navin or i used to visit the b school or the engineering college the focus or the targeted audience was restricted to that specific educational institution so in the initial part of this covid when we thought of uh, you know utilizing this global platform of podcast that actually helped us to reach out to the audience not only within the india but also outside as well i think that is what technology can do to you if you can put to use in right way so but otherwise i think navin you summed it up sure thanks so sagar tell us something about your personal life what is something that you do other than taking care of service delivery of a major uh, e-commerce giant in my personal life i'm married I have uh, two kids. One is three, and the younger one is one year old. Apart from uh, playing with them, I really like to read a lot. I am into reading books. Currently, I am reading Deep Work, which is written by Cal Newport. And I was active Toastmasters back when I was in Hyderabad CDK. Right now, I am not a, a Toastmaster a club because of COVID. but i really enjoy talking and i really enjoy sharing whatever i know in which can be beneficial to anyone around so those are my hobbies excellent thank you we really appreciate you taking time from your uh, busy schedule and thank you for joining us today it was indeed a great discussion on career progression in service delivery and operation and it really helped us busting some of the myths in the industry thank you sagar Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you Sagar. Dear listeners, to know more about our speaker and the content, visit or follow us on social media. We are available on LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, Pinterest and also on YouTube. Just search for The Guiding Voice. Follow, like and also share within your network. Also, feel free to WhatsApp us on India number Nine four nine four five eight seven one eight seven. Again, it is India number nine four nine four five eight seven one eight seven, and we will be happy to collaborate with you. All right, 
so it brings us to the trivia segment of today's episode and today's trivia is about a computer that ran on water you know in 1936 about 84 years ago russia built a computer that ran on water so before these transistors and integrated chips and processors were miniaturized computers had a much more visible system of counting things like gears pivots beads and levers were often used they needed some sort of power source to function so vladimir lukanov built something like this in 1936 but he used water to create a computer that solved partial differential equations in images of the lukanov computer you will see a complex system of interconnected tubes filled with water and adjusting taps and plugs altered the flow of water of course changing the variables while the end result was seen by measuring the level of water in certain tubes it was also called a water integrator and was originally designed to solve the problem of cracking in concrete it's now found in moscow's polytechnic museum interesting isn't it thank you for listening there is more in store stay tuned guys have a wonderful time take care be safe until next time bye bye